Audrey's parents were divorced. The girl's mother, Clara, not only did not maintain friendly relations with her ex-husband, Thomas, but she even forbade Audrey to see her father. Thomas was allowed to see his daughter only twice a year on her birthday and New Year to give her presents, but nothing else. The girl was very worried about it, but she did not dare to disobey her mother. One day, when the already grown-up 16-year-old Audrey was walking down the street, she noticed that a car was following her slowly. The girl was frightened and rushed to run, but suddenly someone called her name, and turning around, she saw her father in the car. "'Daddy, you scared me!' exclaimed Audrey. "'I'm sorry, dear. I just forgot that you haven't seen my new car yet. Get in, I want to talk to you.' Let's go to the restaurant and have lunch, said Thomas, and seeing the consternation and confusion on the girl's face, added, You can tell your mother that you're going to stay late in school. Audrey smiled and, calling her mother, said everything as her father advised. Since then, they had seen each other often, and it had pleased them both very much. But Audrey was still worried about having to lie to her mother, because they had always been honest with each other, and now the girl had to constantly twist and invent excuses for secret meetings with her father. But one day, everything was revealed. Clara decided to go for a walk after work to get some fresh air, and she accidentally saw Audrey with Thomas in the park. The woman stealthily approached them and heard what they were talking about. Thomas was persuading Audrey to move in with him in the capital. You will live in your own room in my big house. You will prepare for the college. I will pay for everything. What are you going to do in this little town? But what about my mother? She'll be upset, Audrey muttered sadly. Nothing. She understands that she can't give you what I can give you, and besides, I also have the right to participate in your upbringing, Thomas persuaded his daughter. No, you have not got. Unable to stand it, shouted Clara furiously. Out of surprise, Audrey and Thomas shuddered and turned to Clara. Isn't it too late you remembered about her? You had a good idea. Your daughter is already grown up. No diapers, no childhood illnesses, no getting up at night, nothing. Now you finally need her. Get out of here and don't ever show up again. Then the angry mother turned to her daughter. Get up and let's go home. But Audrey suddenly refused. Mum, I don't want to go. I want to be with my father. Hearing this, Clara, barely holding back her tears, walked away silently. The girl looked after her with pain and pity and, unable to stand it, apologised to her father and ran to catch up. From that day on, Audrey and her mother began to quarrel constantly. Clara urged the girl to stop seeing her father, but Audrey stood her ground and, for the first time ever, she openly resisted her mother. The girl had not yet told her mother that her father had shown her the note where Clara had written long ago that she refused her daughter. Upon finding out about this, Audrey held a grudge against her mother, but at the same time she did not understand why, after that, she stayed with her mother and not with her father. When she asked him about it, Thomas just shrugged and said, I don't know. She probably had her conscience awakened. And soon Clara found out that her daughter continued to text her father. The woman couldn't stand it and made a terrible scandal. You will not see him any more. I forbid you. He doesn't need you, shouted Clara in despair. Why on earth would you think that? You're playing with me like a doll. First you gave me to him and then you took me away as if I were a thing. Why are you looking at me like that? Yes, I know everything. My father showed me that note. That's it. I'm fed up with all this. I'm leaving you, 
the girl shouted and grabbed her jacket and ran out of the house. An hour later, Clara's mother, Mrs. Perez, tried to reach her daughter to say that Audrey was at her place. After several unsuccessful attempts, she called a neighbour and asked to find out if Clara was home. Two minutes later, the excited neighbour called back. Mrs. Perez, the door was unlocked. I went in and Clara was lying on the floor. So I called an ambulance and I'm waiting now. Mrs. Perez and Audrey immediately went to the hospital. The crisis had passed. Clara's life was no longer in danger. But if even one more hour had passed, irreparable things would have happened. Now the woman needed long-term treatment and recovery. Mommy, Mommy, forgive me. Audrey squeezed her mother's exhausted hand. You gave us such a fright. Please don't do that again. Daughter, I love you very much, said Clara in a weak voice. Mom, please take care of her, okay? Soon the doctor came in and asked the visitors to leave. Mrs. Perez, left alone with Audrey, did not hold back a bitter rebuke. What have you done, granddaughter? Granny, I just couldn't take it any more. My father told me everything and showed me the note in which she rejected me. I still love her, but I don't know how to forgive her, said the girl and cried. The grandmother sighed heavily and, sitting closer, told Audrey how it really was. Your mother told me not to tell you about it, but nevertheless, listen. Your father started cheating on your mother almost immediately after the wedding, and she forgave him everything and accepted him back, even if he wasn't home for days at a time. They worked at the same company only in different departments. Thomas quickly became deputy CEO and Clara worked as chief accountant. But Thomas was promoted not because of his professional qualities, but because he began to meet with the CEO, a willful and not very decent woman. She was the one who demanded that Thomas divorce your mother and marry her. And, to hurt her even more, they agreed to take you away from her. They managed to do it easily. They hid the contracts and invoices and accused her of grand larceny. And they offered her a choice, divorce and rejection of you, or years of imprisonment and a broken fate. I was the one who persuaded her to write that note. They had it all planned out, but they didn't count on one little thing. You were a very sickly child, and you cried a lot. And one day they packed up your things and brought you back to your mother. They didn't endure even three months. That's it, darling, and you, you say, betrayed. A few months later, when Clara was on the mend, she was discharged from the hospital so that she could continue her recovery at home. Audrey never left her mother's side and helped her with everything. One day, the doorbell rang. It was Thomas. He said hello to Clara, and she brought him into their daughter's room. Audrey didn't understand anything and looked at her parents in surprise. Darling, your father and I talked and decided that it would be really better for you to live and to study in the capital. Only I made a condition. Your father will rent you a separate apartment nearby so as not to interfere with his family. That way, he will look after you and I can visit you too. Audrey was excited and squealing with delight, she rushed to pack her things. Her mother began to help her and Thomas watching this could not hide his jubilation that everything had worked out so well. Audrey said goodbye to her mother and ran downstairs after her father. He had already put her baggage into the trunk and was standing nearby waiting. The girl came out of the entrance, looked up and saw her mother standing alone on the balcony. Audrey waved to her. Clara, barely keeping her sobs in check, waved back to her daughter and, unable to endure the hard minutes of parting, disappeared into her room. But Audrey understood everything. Her heart ached, and after a little hesitation, she came to the car. Daughter, 
Get in the front seat. I'm sorry, Dad, Audrey said and opened the trunk and pulled out her suitcase. I can't go with you. My mother needs me because I'm the only one she has. And you have family, friends, work. Go alone and I'll go home. Saying this, Audrey walked towards the entranceway, turning around only for a moment and waving to her father. Thomas silently followed her with a glance, and even when she disappeared behind the entrance door, he stood looking after her for a long time, realizing that he had lost his daughter forever. <laughs>